Good afternoon. I hope I will keep you entertained on the, last, on the session before the last one. And uh, my name is Naeem Ben Hamida from Siena. In this presentation, I will show how we can leverage our leading edge technology in the coherent space to you know, address the exponential growth of bandwidth for AI, ML, and data center applications. Our foundational IP that we are using in the coherent space is leverage to be able to get a best-in-class 224 gig Cerdes, but also we chose a path through silicon of a 448 gigabit per second Cerdes. This is a three nanometer CMOS implementation. And, you know, and this is what, so when we are using our WaveLogic 6, you know, uh, technology and, you know, three nanometer CMOS ADCs and DACs, we're able to get to 448 gig Cerdes, um, you know, because we are sampling at 224 gigabit per second and we are getting, you know, a clean, 448 gigabit PAM for, uh, you know, um, constellations. To keep, you, to show the capability of the data converters, we can keep the sampling rate at 225 giga sample per second and increase the cardinalities. From PAM4, we get 450 in this case, to PAM6, we'll get 582, with BAM6, we'll get, you know, we need 3 dB more SNR to deliver BAM6. And then we can achieve actually 675 gigabit per second for BAM8. This is really to showcase the capability of the data converters. But this is really, so what led us to this pinnacle point? Let's describe effectively the journey, who we are. At Siena, you know, we offer market-leading optical system for you know, network application that ranges from the submarine application to the regional long haul, to the metro, to the edge. We are number one in market share for optical, optical system partner of choice for all global cloud partner, leader across all key applications, deployed in 70 countries, and 26 of the 27 uh, service provider Globally, we are serving those. So from that perspective, and how we are delivering this, we are delivering this by being vertically integrated. And, you know, and the key component of the vertical integration is owning the DSP and owning all the components of the DSP. Our journey in DSP assisted, you know, optical modems, started in early 2000, and that's when I started, where we produced the first DSP-assisted electro-optics, eliminating the dispersion compensation. So we converted the, dispersion comp the optical dispersion comp compensation module by really playing with the TX and pre distorting the signal and shipping this optical signal so it can be received dispersion-free. What enabled that is a high-speed DAC. And that was in, you know, 130 nanometer by CMOS. The next step in the 2007, 2008, we introduced, and this is part of Nortel, the first coherent 40 gigabit per second optical modem. That was, you know, and then the key component that enabled that was a high-speed ADC in conjunction with a high-speed DAC. We took two of these, 40 gigabit per second, and we just overclock them and we make the first 100 gigabit per second, you know, optical system. Then in 2011, 2012, in 32 nanometer, we have the first 200 gigabit per second optical modem. And still, we managed to double the speed and the sampling rate of the data converters and the throughput of the system. Then, we, in, in uh, 2017, the first 400 gig in 20, in 20 nanometer FDSOI technology. 
that was, you know, 400 gig at 56 gigabaud. That was the foundation of the DCI network globally. In 2020, we have the first 800 gig modem. And an 800 gig modem is, uh, you know, it needs its equivalent to really uh, a 224 gig Cerdis because it needs a 50 gigahertz bandwidth and it needs a sampling rate that is equivalent. So that was the first you know, 800 gigabit per second in seven nanometer FinFET. And we managed to push the bandwidth and the sampling rate of the ADC, the bandwidth to 50 gigahertz, the sampling rate to 112 gig, giga sample per second. Then on top of the, um, you know, the high performance application we have for the 400 gig ZR, we have the, you know, the highest performing 400 gig ZR and the lowest power 400 gig ZR that we managed to fit all that DSP in a QSF VDD that's consuming 15 watts. Recently this year, we announced the first 1.6 terabit per second optical modem, and that is the first, you know, 200 gigabit, 200 gigabaud system, 100 gigahertz bandwidth, 1.6 T in three nanometer CMOS. The IPs in the WaveLogic 6 are the foundational IP that are used for this demo here. At the same time, we are now announced 140 gigabaud, you know, 800 gig in a QSF PDD. Also, we announced a 2 by 800 gig LR, which is a 1.6 in a plug, using the same foundational components. So this is really the components of the WaveLogic 6 modem. You see the, uh, the chip, the ASIC, that is the heart of this modem, and that is producing 100 gigahertz bandwidth and sampling at 225 giga sample per second. And you see the receiver that have electrical bandwidth of 100 gigahertz and an optical bandwidth of 100 gigahertz. And you see the coherent driver and modulator that is 100 gigahertz or 200 gigabaud. And you see the bandwidth of those components. So all these components now are 200 gigabit grade. In essence, they are able to deliver a 448 gig because that is the requirement, is to, to be 200 gigabaud grade. Oops. Uh oh, sorry. Sorry about that. So that led to the Telstra 1.6 trial, world record enabled by WaveLogic 6, going 700 kilometer and you know, delivering 100% increase in capacity, increase in fiber capacity, and it's delivering literally 700 kilometers where, you know, 1.6, 200 gigabaud system. And you can see here just all our generation of products are shown in the wavelengths there that dates back to the 400 gig, 800 gig, and so on in, in that, in that uh, plot. So that's, the, and that's the, the modem that enabled that. So on the 1.6 T coherent light, it consists of 8 by 224 gig serides a DSP, and then two by 800 gig, you know, optical, enabled by high-speed DAX and ADCs. At 1.6 terabit Ethernet client, dual 800 gig LR engines, 300 nanoseconds of latency. This is tailored toward, you know, campus application inside the data center. This is trying to make sure that the coherent is entering the data center. And that is covering 1 to 20 kilometer. So how we are building these? So we're building it through Lego pieces. We start with the most performing and the highest bandwidth and the highest complexity. <laughs> and then, you know, we target that market and then we assemble it you know, by power optimize it and size optimize it to go to the pluggable and then to go to the short reach electrical 
and show it to each optical also. And primarily because Serdes is used to be, you know, mixed mode Serdes. Since the Serdes became ADC based, they came back, they came to our territory. That's how we started. So when we put all these pieces together, we can deliver a Serdes that can do 40 dB with 3 e to the minus 7, you know, with enough taps and with good performance, you know, that we are using in our own application for the 2 by 800 gig LR, but also can be used in other spaces. That for the extreme side, where we're just going back to that 224 uh, giga sample per second, 3 nanometer, that's what we have. This is what you're seeing is the measured TX, uh, TXI at a DCA. So we are measuring really the TX PAM4 in this case. And we are looking at, you know, the frequency response of that. It is peaking at 100 gigahertz because our target is to peak it at 100 gigahertz. And then if the discussion now is, you know, 448, is it PAM4, is it PAM6, is it PAM8? You see those, you know, three combinations. At PAM6, you're going for, at PAM4, you're going for the highest uh, baud rate. But at the same time, it's a solution that requires the least SNR. At PAM6, you are reducing the baud rate to 175. But at the same time, you are increasing the required SNR by 3 dB. At PAM8, you are reducing to 150 gigabaud. But compared to PAM4, the required SNR is increased by 6 dB. At a certain point, you know, it becomes impossible to implement it because there's not enough SNR to implement it, and you have to come up with different FEC schemes or different solution or different channels, and you have to look at these trade-offs. This is just, uh, I showed up to now, the, um, the TXI, this is just a TX, loop, TX to RX loop back in a channel, and you're seeing the 448 both in PAM4 and the 448 in PAM6. So the discussion around, you know, what FEC engine, what cardinality that we need. And this is what I'm showing in PAM4, PAM6, and PAM8. If you are targeting 1e to the minus 6 as a FEC, an acceptable FEC rate, you need 20.4 for PAM4, you need, you know, 23.4 for PAM6, and you need 26.4 for PAM8. 26.4 becomes nearly impossible to deliver on that. So you need really to increase the FEC to be able to reduce the SNR. And getting to a, in order to get to the same level of 20.4, similar to a PAM4, you need to have a FEC that is capable of correcting 1%. So we have to look at these trade-offs. What is the channels? What's the cardinality? What's the SNR margin? And combine all those together and build a system, you know, based on that. So in summary, you know, CNI announced, and this refers to 1.6T coherent light pluggable. It's 1.6 in a plug based on 3 nanometer coherent DSP and 224 gig Serdes. We are demonstrating here, uh, this will lead in 224 gig Serdes performing at OCP, 224 gig Serdes with a 40 dB plus channel loss within, in this environment, you know, a BR better than 1 e to the minus 6. We have 1.6, 200 gigabaud coherent technology with ultra high bandwidth DAX and ADCs. And that product is shipping right now for deployment. Sienna is demonstrating first silicon at four, operating at 448 gig electrical lane at this floor. Thank you very much.